We've got a couple of old dead tree stumps that are, you know, decaying and they're kind of kind of look pretty nice the way they are. In this one, I've actually planted a fern, um, and that's that's pretty good. But I think I want to step up my game a little bit for what to do with these stumps. Uh, I'll show you a couple pictures of uh, what I've got in mind. What I want to do is plant a tree in the stump like a nursery log and have the roots intertwine down into the stump and around the stump as well. To train the roots to do that, I'm going to build a temporary raised bed around the outside and fill it with dirt, put the tree in there, give it several years probably, and then very slowly as the roots are established, I'll remove the planks going down so that it's constantly got roots in the ground and by the time I'm completely done the roots will have theoretically pierced all the way down into the earth and I'll be left with this sculpture of a living tree. I think it's really going to be a a wonderful project. It's going to be a long time though. Um, could be 10 years, might be 20 years, I don't know how long it's going to take to uh, be completely finished with this. Um, what I've got right now is uh, just some scrap pieces of uh, 4x4s. Uh, they're different, different heights and the ground isn't level so the whole thing is going to be a little cattywampus but uh, not too worried about that. These uh, side pieces for this one are cedar planks and my uncle when he built this house uh, had cedar um, cedar accent walls in all the rooms and uh, we updated the place. We didn't quite like that look. I wanted something a little bit more modern on the inside and uh, I kept the cedar planks um, just in case I needed them and uh, this is a good project for them. The structure of the temporary raised beds is clamped together to hold a good shape until I can screw in a few boards. I'm using washers with the shears to add some surface area to the screw heads just in case the pressure of the soil wants to pop those screws through the boards. I think it also might make the uh, screw heads easier to find when I undo them years in the future. If anyone is wondering what that is in the background, I've just got a couple of pallets of stacked firewood covered with a black tarp.
much higher with these uh, courses. I'm going to put in a couple of two by twos as uh, stakes for the tree that will eventually be planted here. Um, they'll be screwed in a couple of different, uh, different, different times so the stakes will be there for longer than normal because the tree will be a little bit tipsy for longer than normal just the way I'm going to be planting it. Right now, I've got an abundance of leaves and grass for the compost bins, and uh, truth is my, my compost bins are getting a little bit overwhelmed at this point, and we still have a lot more leaves to come down. So instead of buying new uh, potting soil for the whole depth of this thing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mix grass and leaves to compost naturally on the bottom so that by the time the roots reach down there it'll be just great compost for it to dig its roots into. Um, also saves me money not having to buy extra dirt.
I'll probably have to make a couple trips back and forth from the compost bins for this thing. Um, it's so light and fluffy, it's definitely going to squish way down once I put more top of the uh, potting soil on top of it. I've got the fern still planted in the in the tree stump, and uh, I think I'll probably go ahead and move it, plant it somewhere else. It's uh, it's getting a little bit buried in some of the compost debris, and I don't want to, I don't want to harm it at all. All right, so I've pre-dug the new hole for the fern. I'll get this out and uh, be right back. Alright, the inside of the tree trunk is uh, obviously not as uh, deep as the, as the bin itself because I had already put a bunch of dirt in there before planting that fern. So I'm going to go ahead and top off that uh, tree trunk with the potting soil and then I'll go back to doing more of the uh, grass and leaf combo for the uh, um, composting. I bought these trees at Portland Nursery, mostly because I really trust their advice. I wanted to know what kind of tree specifically to get that could do what I wanted it to do. And uh, they suggested the Western Hemlock because it's a native conifer. Um, so it should do pretty well out here. One down, one to go. I started with the easy one. Uh, the other one is down in the ravine on an extreme slope. So that's going to be a, a trickier uh, raised bed box to, uh, to build. So this tree stump is a much more of a challenge. It's a very unusual shape and it's on an extreme slope. 
So the raised bed that I'm building around it, I want to conform to the uh, tree stump so the roots kind of hug it. So this temporary raised bed is going to look pretty funny for a while, but uh, hopefully it'll do the job. As you can see, I've had to uh, do some custom fitting to get this thing to uh, fit the shape of the, not only the box around it, but also some of the uh, tree stump itself. It's a little more work than I thought it would be.
right. Uh, I had to build this temporary raised bed using plywood because of all the the little uh, wedge shaped pieces. I didn't want the thinner ends to split, which might have happened with uh, just regular boards. The uh, plywood should be very uh, very good for this particular project. Plus, all of it was just scrap. A lot of it from my dad. Thanks, Dad. I knew ahead of time that I was going to be building this project. So back when I was cutting some of the materials for the rabbit tractors, I also used my dad's shop to cut these wedge-shaped plywood pieces. Usually, I like to use the fence on the table saw, but here I'm just feeding the wood through carefully by eye. I'll show you what the uh, what the box looks like. So it's not perfect, but uh, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it is what it is, and I think it'll work pretty well. I have intentionally crowded this side pretty good and left a good deal more space on this down slope edge. When the tree gets really big, the new tree, um, this is where I want the main roots to be supporting it so it's uh, uh, strong and uh, it's real close to the creek down uh, down below which is uh, where the roots will naturally kind of want to uh, seek out more moisture. Alright so I'm going to go ahead and top off the inside of this uh, old stump with potting soil and then do the same sort of thing I did before with the uh, composting of leaves and uh, grass in the bottom part of uh, mostly this, uh, this deep section here and then top off the rest of it with the, uh, with the potting soil.
All right, I'll just tie that off to the tree stakes. And then it's a matter of waiting. This is November 1st, 2019. I'm not sure when my next update will be for this, but it's gonna be a long, long-term project. Here's a third raised bed over another decaying stump. I built it the following week, but didn't film any of that process. For some of this one, I've used old weathered cedar fence boards, so they blend in with the forest floor a little better. It'll be interesting to see if they stand up as long as they need to. Some of them are a little soft, so I'll have to keep my eye on them. I didn't expect these off-kilter crate-like raised beds to be so intriguing and beautiful in the landscape. They are already by themselves adding a sense of whimsy to this forest setting that I love so much.